My lab has had a long-standing interest in uh, white matter injury throughout the lifespans, uh, ranging from preterm infants who acquire cerebral palsy all the way to the other end of life with uh, patients with vascular dementias, for example, uh, and uh, patients who have multiple sclerosis. So there's a wide number of conditions in which white matter injury uh, impacts um, neurological function and we've been trying to understand what are the roadblocks to regeneration and repair. Why is it that after injury to the brain, injury to the white matter, the brain fails to initiate the repair responses that are required for normal function again? There was a key cell type in the uh, white matter called the oligodendrocyte progenitor cell, or what we call the OPC. And those cells uh, we uh, originally showed were very vulnerable to hypoxia, ischemia, and other insults, which killed these cells and selectively deleted them from the white matter. So we believed that the loss of these cells was the basis for the failure of the brain to recover from injury. And to our surprise, as we started studying chronic lesions, we found that these cells had a remarkable ability to regenerate themselves and initiate a repair response. There's a molecule in the extracellular matrix called hyaluronic acid. Uh, this is a large megadalton molecule. It's one of the largest molecules in the body. It was originally thought to be the glue between cells that holds them together. Uh, and over the years, we've, many labs have demonstrated that hyaluronic acid um, has roles both in inflammation as well as appears to have roles in signaling that have not been, uh, uh, have been dif more difficult to define. And so uh, we initially demonstrated that hyaluronic acid accumulates in brain lesions in the white matter and blocks the repair process. And indeed what we found was that the brain uh, lysates would generate a broad range of fragment sizes, um, ranging roughly from about 150 to 600 kilodaltons. And so this gave us a clue that there was within that kind of mixture of sizes a potential uh, bioactive fragment that might be inhibitory to remyelination after injury. We screen those in the tissue culture model system and were able to identify that there was one unique size out of a, a large range of fragments that actually uh, selectively blocked uh, the maturation of the oligodendrocyte progenitors. We then were able to start defining the molecular pathways that um, this particular molecule uses to block the repair capacity of the progenitor cells. Now what was surprising to us when we first tested this molecule was that we looked at a downstream readout of myelination uh, called AKT and um, expected to find that this hyaluronic acid fragment would shut down the, the very potent myelination signaling that AKT mediated. And to our surprise, what we found is that initially, um, this hyaluronic acid fragment actually stimulated uh, AKT activation, which uh, was quite paradoxical. Um, and so we started to delve into this, this finding and realized that what was really going on is that there was a transient activation of AKT and then a chronic uh, inactivation of AKT. Looking at this, this pathway, we then realized that the roadblock was actually quite profound and that other uh, very potent signals for myelination we're not able to detour around this particular repair block. The remainder of the study then traced a molecular pathway which bore a number of similarities to the 
are kind of pathways that have been previously defined for endotoxin tolerance. And we found that, in fact, uh, one of the, that there was one single receptor, the toll-like receptor 4, that was activated by the hyaluronic acid fragment and would uh, then signal via a, an alternative or non-canonical pathway um, to uh, shut down AKT. Now what is downstream of AKT, there's a number of potential uh, transcriptional regulators that uh, we considered and ultimately identified one called FOXO3, which turned out to be a very interesting uh, transcriptional regulator of uh, myelin gene expression, which was specifically controlled by our hyaluronic acid fragment. Interestingly, we found that FOXO3 um, selectively accumulates in the OPCs that we had originally shown in the baby brain and in the aging brain to accumulate. So there was a very nice smoking gun here where the cells that are blocked in their repair capacity were the only cells that were selectively accumulating this FOXO3 within the nucleus. That raises the interesting opportunity that we might be able to actually use FOXO3 as a readout for, or as a biomarker for uh, studying repair, uh, the repair process and therapies that we might consider to, to stimulate repair. The tantalizing idea, I think, is that we might be able to stimulate the repair process by blocking uh, the, the generation of this bioactive hyaluronic acid fragment using um, more selective and potent hyaluronidase inhibitors than we've had in the past. So uh, that is an exciting direction. We're currently looking at a number of candidate molecules that might be potent hyaluronidase inhibitors. And of course, within the, the pathway that we've defined, there's a number of other potential branch points where we could think about translation, including at the level of the receptor complex that interacts with hyaluronic acid in the fragment, as well as some of the downstream signaling components. So I think there's a number of exciting opportunities uh, to uh, utilize these new insights to promote uh, and accelerate uh, the um, progress with regeneration and repair of myelination disorders throughout the lifespan.